Okay, hello everybody. That's me, Sabina Volter, Love Intimacy Coach. And today I uh, I I wanted I invited for today Ashika Lestani, who is a friend of mine. We've met on a coaching that we did together in a group and seeing her skyrocket her career, um, spreading out her message and seeing her witnessing her becoming the version of her that she is today was like so heartwarming because we actually shared the story in our own separate ways, but somehow on the same path. And uh, it's such a pleasure for me to to actually that that you accepted this invitation. So beautiful. Uh, welcome, Ashika. Welcome. Oh, thank you so much, Samina. It's I am so grateful to be here and and have a conversation with you about our journey and and just to see you also just blossom into this amazing woman and entrepreneur and as we know like in every stage of our life we're called to really step up and i see you know all of us that started at at a, at a beginning point um do that over and over again and it's such an honor to to observe that in you awesome thank you so much by the way, guys, uh, I really need to tell this. Uh, I've we've met at the point where I was just starting. Ashika was already in a program, and I remember my first meeting. And our coach actually asked me, "What is that niche that I would like to take? That I would like to do?" And I was like, "I don't know. I don't have a clue. I don't feel really good enough." And something really came out for me. I started crying, and Ashika was the one who said. You know, look at our first recordings and I'm there and I was at the same point. And that was the best gift that I could actually receive. I really keep it deep in my heart uh, because, you know, when you want to go far, you need to have your tribe. And you as a woman, you need to have women in your life. You need your sisterhood. You need the witches in your life. I, you definitely need, you will do something very quickly alone. But if you want to go far, you need to have your sisters. And, um, and yeah, it was so beautiful for me to receive that. So heartwarming. I really keep it as a treasure in my heart. I sometimes remember that whenever I say something very heartwarming to another woman that starts her journey. So, yeah, and it was awesome. And seeing Ashika right now, uh, you uh, at the place where you are right now, a leadership mentor holistic health educator. Uh, I mean, when I sometimes scroll Instagram and I find your uh, your posts, your, your reels, I'm, I'm like, you know, really, guys, you need to in the comment section in uh, in the description of the of this video, you will find Ashika. Just go there. Um, her, her her posts are so deep in the sense of I know who I am. I do not need to prove anything. And I just let myself shine. And there's no arrogance in there. It's a pure, humble embracing of the inner power that we have as women. This is my, this is how I see that. This is how I feel that. And I truly appreciate it. So yeah, just go there and check it guys. Um, anyway, do not let oh me praise you too much. Say something. <laughs> Oh, wow. Thank you so much that, um, yeah, you know what, it's, it's been a journey and it continues to be a journey. It, mm -hmm. It's something that doesn't ever stop, especially when you become aware of, you know, what your purpose is and what your mission is. You, and I'm going to use this very loosely, you, it becomes an obligation for you to not only show up for others, but to take care of yourself through that. Because if we don't, we're not able to show up for others. And, and for women, it is very difficult for us to really put ourselves first, to put right. our needs first. But when it comes to entrepreneurship and really like showing up online it's not easy mm -hmm. it's not easy and you know when when you say you go to my posts and you and you see it and, and you feel a certain way is 
outside of my education, there's that educated self and then there's that healed and learning self, yeah. right? That continues to keep growing and you really have to show up and share where you are. Nobody is perfect. And yeah. sometimes social media can put this, you know, cover or facade over it where you really have to, exactly. in order to, in order to, be a leader you have to go first right so you have to raise your hand and say yes I've been there yes I felt the pain All right. yes a fear of being online like we still I mean as you know like you know we still have those resistance every season every chapter of our life that we step into as women there is a fear that we have to walk through mm-hmm mm-hmm Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something very important that you said. What I would add is that um, we exactly we just see the facade, we see the surface, you don't know what the story of the person who shows up, you don't know what she felt what she what she's been through. Um, and who she needed to become, and how she actually accepts to wear that personality each time she steps up. Because let me tell you, yes. I hated my photographs. I hated like photo sessions. I hated being on TikTok, on YouTube or whatever. I, I still don't like it. But there is a part of me that absolutely loves it. There is a part of me mm. that asked you for that interview. There is a part of me that wants to be seen and that knows stuff. And I choose that part of me to speak through me. She knows better. And she really knows better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And that's and that's the greatest part about being a coach and a mentor and a leader that we are in that space is that when you work with a woman, you pull that out of her. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not meant no, become, yeah. It's not becoming fake. It's not like that. It's actually becoming mm -hmm. authentic. It's integrating that part of you that that you had it when you were born, because every baby wants to be seen. Let's be honest. Of course. And at some point in life, it, 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 it was dimmed. That light was dimmed. And it's our responsibility and the privilege, I'd say, to go back to that yeah. and take that to your current reality and use it wisely now. Because we don't want to be kids anymore, but we want to use that yeah. ability wisely. And that is game changer in every possible way, in every field. So. Yeah, and um, what I would like to ask, um, Shika, what made you, you? What is the story behind you? How is it that you're now in that what you do, helping people that you help? Well, I mean, you <laughs> <It's> know, <laughs> talk about it. <laughs> it's, it, it's been a journey. It's been a journey. But, you know, for the sake of time, like I'll just kind of like, Mm -hmm. put the pieces together. When I first realized that I had a mission, mm -hmm. you know, when I first realized I had a mission, it started during my divorce and my separation, my separation and my divorce, mm -hmm. and really feeling like drawn and driven from inwards, mm -hmm. right? As you know, if you are somebody who's gone through separation and divorce and being a new mom at the same time, like my son was only two and a half years old, right? So like dealing with postpartum and um, a long-term marriage um, uh, falling apart, that really took a toll on me. It really did. And that's when I found myself, you know, pulling in all the strength that I've built through the years, um, you know, my relationship with my dad, where he told me, he's like, you know, you're the son that I never had. So it's like mm -hmm. me pulling in from that and saying, okay, well, I really need to show up in, in my masculine because that's how mm -hmm. I can be seen by my dad. So I had that as a tool, right? Um, and then also always having such um, um, importance of knowing about your health and your mental health as well, where fitness and mental health went goes together. Because mm -hmm. when you train, you're not really training for your body, 
but you're training for your mind. Yeah. And then I, so I took in all the tools that I had and I caught myself once I found myself once just on the floor crying oh <laughs> and God. I said, oh, universe, God, you know, just anybody out there, if you are listening, what do I need to do? Mm -hmm. What do I need to do? Who do I need to become? Yeah. Right. Yeah. We talk about like when we become and who do we need to become? And at that point in my life, when I was on the floor there, I almost had like this outer body experience. I almost had this outer body experience while I could see myself standing outside of me. And she was telling me, or my future self was telling me, this is only the beginning. You need to get up. You need to figure this out and you need to take care of yourself. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Right. And the rest will fall in. Mm -hmm. And just saying that right now gives me goosebumps because I can take myself back into that chapter of my life, into that scene, because it's almost like a, a scene now in my head. And that's when I knew I was like, okay, well, what do I need to do? Was that the best way? I don't know. Did it work at that point in my life? Yes, because it allowed me to, to, use the tools that I had, I was integrating in my life that I didn't even know that I would pay it forward to other women. At that point in my life, it was just, I was using it for me. Yeah. And again, this was like 10, yeah, it was like, um, it was a decade ago, right? And as I started to take care of myself, as I started to you know, go back to fitness and nutrition, feed my body, take care of my mindset, looking at does this marriage serve me? Does this marriage give me what I need, what I want from my future self? Mm -hmm. And that was a really powerful question. Um, and wasn't an easy question. It wasn't an easy question because in it's a very difficult one. No. Yeah. So in my marriage, there was infidelity on my partner's part. So it really made me feel, am I worthy? Mm -hmm. It made me feel like there was something wrong with me that I did. Something. Because as women, we put it on ourselves. Like, am I the one, right? Of course, there's, there's yeah, two that's sides a very, to it. Yeah, it's a very, very quick uh, mechanism. It's actually, what did I do wrong? What was it that I that's did right. for you? Yeah, yeah. It's very often. Yeah. Yeah. So I, what I did to be nice, I took in all the tools I took in fitness and nutrition. I, um, ended up hiring a coach and a counselor as well, because there was things outside that I needed to talk to a counselor about. But what I did is I created a community of support. Yeah. Awesome. So, so important. This is so important. Yeah. So important. And by creating a community of support, I was really able to show up for myself, like take myself off that floor, look at what I want for my life, what I want for my son, you know, and he was, and part of my story is also the, on, on my weakest moments, what kept me going was that I needed to show up for my son. Oh my God. That's How I put myself first in, in my story is I show up the best I can as a mother and the woman that I want my son to see growing up. Oh my God. That's awesome. That is so wonderful. So that you really had goosebumps when you were sharing your stuff <laughs> you so for that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how my story started and then I decided to go back to school and my son was in kindergarten. So it's like also knowing when is the best time to step forward. You know, and this was something you can't fake it till you make it. Like you got to yeah. go through the tragedy, the cry. You got to get angry. You got to get frustrated. You you have to you have to go through the emotions. And in, in my story, I never stopped myself from feeling those things. Although I had moments where I was like, okay, wipe your tears, like get up, get going. But I always gave myself that ninety seconds of cry, get it out of your system, mm -hmm. and do this need to you don't want to suppress it exactly. but creating that support system really allowed me to show up so I went back to school and I became a registered holistic nutritionist um after that I went into personal training so I went back and I was like okay I'm doing the inner work now I want to do the outer work mm -hmm. 
And, and then what I want to do is I want to marry that together. Yes. Right. And, and I said, and there was a part of me where, what was culturally, culturally, um, when you see a South Asian woman and she is divorced or separated or whatever, people look at you like, oh, poor you, like you, 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 oh, yeah. even though you don't want to be the victim, you become the victim in, in a lot of people's eyes. Mm -hmm. So I really have. Break, I really had to to break through that stereotype, but I didn't want to prove myself to somebody. I didn't have to. The way I was going to break through it, I was going to prove myself to me. Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful story. Yeah. And it's such a beautiful moment and uh, a breakthrough, actually, when you own your story and there's this big part of you that says you can serve you with that story. It's like there are people oh in my your God. shoes and yet you and it's like, don't keep it to yourself. You own that to other people. It would be yes. such a terrible loss if you keep it to yourself. Such a loss. Yes. And I think that yeah. this is something very beautiful. At some point, your story combined this big pain that you needed to feel to grow and at some point you felt such an inspiration such a higher calling that pulled you you didn't have to escape go through the pain you needed to just accept the pull surrender to that that's, beautiful. that's right and surrender it's awesome huge word surrender is a huge word and you get to the point where you you feel okay you know what if i can do it other women can do it. Yeah. If I have the tool and I have the framework and I've done it and you're living proof of it, right? That okay. you you went through pain, you went through feeling uncomfortable. Yeah. Right? You integrated yeah. the tool. As I remember yeah. in the beginning of our party when you said integrating, there's one thing to know it and there's another thing to integrate it. The work happens when you integrate it. And that's yeah. when it gets really ugly and uncomfortable yeah. and you feel alone you know so within my story there was many times I felt really alone um and you know what that was okay because I feel like I need that exactly it's okay to feel alone yeah it's, I think that you know uh, I very often tell to my clients just allow yourself to feel the pain and when you feel the pain you will feel that you're alone it doesn't mean that it's that it's true because there may be people surrounding you. There may be people you can talk to, talk with, that they can be somewhere close to you, but you will feel alone. It is, yes. but, Especially it is yeah. but if we avoid feeling pain, that's where the suffering kicks in. And it will, it, yeah. it, we will feel it sooner or later, some, some other way. Uh, I remember how how my body was so numb. My body was so numb, I didn't feel anything. And uh, yeah. I needed to literally physically uh, just collapse, wake up in hospital to actually understand what, what, was, what was I going through? What did I feed my body? How terrible substances were running in my system that they made me collapse because I was avoiding to feeling the pain that I needed to grow. And that was the, the suffering my suffering my creation of suffering um pain is good because it makes you grow if you allow to feel it yeah. and i yeah and it's so at some point it, it really it, it amazes me that behind every you know every beautiful story of a woman that i ever invite on my uh on my youtube channel there's so much pain behind that but it's integrated and what's very important at some point we just accept it hurts yeah. but I'm not, I'm not going to surrender to that i'm surrendering to that part of me that version of me that already came through that that it, she 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 somehow she she managed i don't know yes. how, how but she did it so i'm going to be inspired by her and i see her in other women who were in my shoes and she speaks to me and I want that. And that's, that's beautiful. And um, what I love about um, the kind of work that you do, that I do, it's not, it's, it's not the niche only. It's not the health, the fitness, the intimacy. It's, it's a holistic approach. 
uh yes I very often laugh with my clients like tell me how you orgasm and i will tell you how do you approach life <laughs> it's not wow is that right <laughs> Uh, I like that. Yeah, the, the way you surrender in bed to uh, to your partner is how you surrender to life. It's like it's such a wonderful thing to to actually see. It's like, huh? How do I do it actually? And how does it, you know, how does it play in other fields in my life? And um, yeah. I noticed when because the the way of my healing went through. Let me feel my body because I want to feel the pleasure. And um, mm -hmm. At some point I needed to look at how do I feed my body with what do I feed it do I feel the energy or do I feel energy depleted afterwards how do I sleep it does my endocrine system works well um there are there were many many questions and at some point I needed to also think and really accept I need to be a priority for me if I'm not priority for yeah. me I won't be a priority to anyone <laughs> And it doesn't absolutely it doesn't come from arrogance. Uh, no. At some point, I needed to also think about the paradox, you know, egoistic, altruistic. The truth is they intertwine. The truth is yeah. when I become the egoist at some point, when I do it consciously, when I do it with love, with self-love, self-respect, that kind of egoism is actually the most altruistic thing that you can do to the world. It's yes. And um, yeah, I have, yeah, there's this, there's two sides to ego. There's, this is the way I look at it, it mm -hmm. exactly the way you explained it. There's two sides to ego. There's one side that says, I am better than everybody. There's the other side where it says, let me go first and tell my story. Mm -hmm. Let me shine so you can shine. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of women are still looking for that. Um, uh, that permission yeah that permission to, to express their sexuality to express their intelligence to express mm -hmm. their pain mm -hmm. that's right yeah and I look at pain as pain has been the biggest gift in my life every time I have felt pain in any situation emotional pain physical pain it has been the biggest gift because that's where I've taken the 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 most tremendous leaps in my life mm -hmm. and in my career and when we talk about um you know having having that pain and even when you talk about you know tell me how you orgasm and I'll tell you how you live life it it is so important to not separate not separate um, a woman in, in a way where it's like she's boxed off in different things, especially in entrepreneurship for the sake of yes. our conversation. It's like, yes, in entrepreneurship, you need to own your sexuality. You need to be comfortable with being seen. You need to be comfortable with people saying, well, who do you think she is? Who do you think you are? Yeah, with your and voice. Right? that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And look past that because you have a greater mission. Your mission is not to respond to the peanut gallery that's saying, who do you think you are? Your mission is to stay aligned with the people you serve and how you serve is how you show up for yourself. Because as women, like, you know, when we see another woman shine, there's two things that can happen. We can either feel intimidated, we can mm -hmm. either feel jealous or third, actually three things is that we feel empowered right? Those of us in that space that want to empower women, we have to go first. We have to feel the pain. It's like almost our spiritual um, responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the same thing. I'm talking yeah, about. You know? When you see a woman who shines brightly and who does stuff so epic that makes you feel kind of even, not good enough. It's like, pay attention to her. She carved the, she carved it away. It's like we are born all the same. We do not walk. We do not talk. We do not do anything. We are totally, we we just lie there. And if people don't care, don't don't care for us, they don't you know nourish us. We die. And uh, if if we right. come to the world exactly the same on this planet, and she could do it, you can do it too. You have it too. You can do it in your own, your own way in your 
align with yourself. She did it for herself. She showed you she can do it. She shows you you can do it too. And that's the beauty yes. of positive jealousy. Positive jealousy is inspiration. Inspiration. Yes. Yes. There's this there's a uh the other podcast I was on I think maybe about a year ago and they had asked you know how do you how do you not pay attention to 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 the jealousy or all of that noise in the back and I said you know what if you feel if you look at a woman and you are triggered by what she's doing okay mm -hmm. or you want to turn that in to inspiration if you are being triggered by what she is doing, then there's a part of you that also wants to shine that way, yes. right? So find out her journey. Don't look at someone's elf end result. Don't look at the end result. The end result is like the cherry on the top, right? Find out about her journey. Listen to her story. That's why telling a story, telling your story, telling my story, telling a story, it, it paves way it carves a way for other women to say okay this is what she did look she is where i was mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Exactly. and and that is so that's why the importance of telling a story but also to when it comes to when you're feeling that you know jealousy start paying attention to that and get to know the person's journey mm -hmm. yeah because the you yeah the moment when we become curious is the moment we stop kind of question the person it's like when when we are jealous it's like we're questioning how is it possible that she's something xyz but when we become become curious is like well how did she do that that's a, that's a living proof how did she do that if she could do it i can do it maybe too it's, it's yeah. a, and I find that, that the women, yeah, and then I find that the women that I do work with that have that sense of feeling, mm -hmm. it all rests, it all originates from not feeling worthy and not feeling enough. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah, that's a big one. Right. Once yeah. you address that, you your your belief system changes. That's when you start to. Um, read about a woman's journey that's when you start yeah. to ask the right questions that's when you start being around the right people that's when you start reevaluating you know what your purpose is what your mission is when you start to refine what it is that you're here to do and yeah. who you're here to serve when you shift that perspective when you take that feeling of envy or jealousy you want to call it um is understanding that it's your worthiness. It's also you understanding that you were born enough and you were born worthy. Like, like you had said earlier, when we're born, we're all of these things. Mm -hmm. And through conditioning and childhood conditioning and family of origin, and, you know, all the things that we, we pick up at school and, um, our, our, our um, our friends group, our social influence, all of that, creates that sense of not feeling worthy and not feeling enough. And then we see others doing what they're doing and being in their light. And we think, oh, well, you know, how would she do that? Or how can she do that? Or yeah. whatever dialogue comes up in your mind. But I'm here to also say, just because you see a shining doesn't mean that we don't have that dialogue. Doesn't mean that, you know, yeah. we at all times feel 110% worthy or we feel 110% enough. enough. But sometimes what no, and what drives us is understanding that we have to continue. We have that that obligation. Like I said, I call it, I love calling it the spiritual obligation. I'm gonna like <laughs> it's, it's, a great term. it's a great term. I absolutely it resonates with me too. Really. It is. Yeah. It's a mission. It's something much more bigger than than we are. We just respond. That's the thing. It's like the universe doesn't have any favorites. It's just it, it gives, and some people are just receptive for that. And it comes, mm -hmm. and the vision yeah. comes through the people who are just open to receive and to allow that to come to life. It's it's. If I could compare it, it's like you become pregnant and the new life comes through you. 
and that child and it, it it's not yours it came through you it doesn't came it didn't came for you um and um and yeah and it's sometimes that, that that not enoughness this is a big topic it's a big topic for every single woman on this planet that not enoughness sometimes i even kind of play a game with egos of my clients and i ask them it's like would you say to any other woman that she's not enough like, no of course not maybe to your sisters to your kids to your daughters like, no to your mom no whatever relationship they had with their moms um it's like so okay so let me sum up you do not say you and you wouldn't say to any other person any other woman that she's not enough but how come you're different like how come mm -hmm. you're the better one to get that compliment <laughs> and it's like do you see yeah. do you see that arrogance is that i think it's not arrogance i'm actually lower no it is arrogance because you put yourself so different to everybody it's like i want to be seen in a bad way but still seen <laughs> that's how ego plays sometimes uh but women sometimes when i play that game with them they actually see oh my god it's not like i feel worse in some way my ego wants to be the best in the worst way but still the best <laughs> but um, yeah. yeah anyway um i wanted to also uh ask you i i'm really curious about your answer to, to this question because it, it popped up to me right now um what is that one thing that you wish women really integrated took in um or took responsibility for or started doing or whatever else but what is that one thing that you wish that everyone actually you know took ownership for mm -hmm. there's there's a few things but the one one thing that's really coming through is stop waiting for permission oh yeah that's stop waiting for permission stop mm -hmm. waiting to be told that you are worthy stop waiting to be told that you are enough stop waiting stop waiting stop waiting yeah. All right. Stop waiting for <laughs> the love of your life to walk through your door. Get out there, you know, yeah. stop waiting to start that business and let go of being perfect about oh it. Oh my God. This is a big one. It's like, a, it's like one leads to the other, right? Like stop waiting and you're waiting because you want the perfect moment. You want the perfect person to walk through the door. You, you need to be you, perfect for perfection. <laughs> that's right. You want the perfect business plan. No, your business plan will evolve as you evolve, yeah. right? You're not, nothing perfect. Your relationship is going to evolve as you evolve right like in every chapter of your life and if you're a parent your relationship with your parent will evolve as you grow not as your child grows as you grow that's very yeah. important to differentiate yeah. so stop waiting for permission start creating okay creating creation is what we're in our feminine energy right mm -hmm. stepping into your feminine energy and don't wait. Attract. You exactly. can't attract. <laughs> you can't attract if you're not creating. So stop waiting. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful allegory. You know, sometimes I, I love to compare. Like, I, I love to imagine myself as being, you know, the egg. Just waiting for that sperm. Waiting. Nothing else so attractive so chemically you know magnetic so shiny great big doing nothing just being and that attracts yeah that attracts. oh i love yeah i really love i really love just thinking about that and and really you know just stepping into that kind of energy that doesn't mean that i didn't prepare that little wonderful nest for That's me right. i did but now i can just you know i can just be me and life will come and i will respond the response, the yeah. surrender. Uh, it doesn't mean not taking action. It means allowing and responding. And that's a different kind of action. 
uh it's yes. more feminine it's it's really, yeah it's, it's a beautiful way and um you know i actually purchased your book and here it is guys if you want to purchase it it's, it's, oh. Amazon. it's a great book actually because i was expecting when i ordered it i was expecting you know uh, a book with recipes and no it's not it's much more what i loved the first page <laughs> you know sometimes i don't read books like from the first page to the to the last i open it and i look what, what's there what's 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 going on on the, on the current page and i kind of decide then uh whether i want to you know read the whole stuff and great. I opened that book and there was a picture uh, of you and uh, and there was a, in bold, there was the sentence, my waist does not define my vi value, something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Or the, the, um, the centimeters of my waist do not define my value. And I was like, yeah, exactly. This is not about food. This is not about fitness. This is how you feel about yourself how you allow to feel about yourself and this approach is totally different it's like you need mm -hmm. to accept who you are becoming right now and not mm -hmm. think of yourself as yeah that syndrome i'll be happy when because that that's only, right. that only trains your mind to think and live as is the present moment moment is just unacceptable and sometime in the future, that never comes, it will be. That's not the point. Right. Acceptance, and I think um, radical acceptance is the, the, the key here. And you need to be gentle with yourself, forgiving. It's like you make mistakes. It's When you bring the vision to the life, that vision is just like being a mother to a little child. You will get messy. You will not sleep sometimes. But one look at that child's eyes and you'll feel oh, i'm so grateful i could be the mother to that child and every other field yeah. is the same thing. business your relationship your relationship with your body with the pleasure with pain sometimes it's messy and most often it's super rewarding when it's authentic authentic yes yeah and um Ashika, is there any question that I didn't ask and you wished that I ask? Oh my gosh, we talked about such amazing things. I think um, <clears throat> not necessarily a question, but mm -hmm. I did want to mention this really important um, share Please that do. everything that yeah like everything we've talked about here and when we you know both of us being women that are on in the online space mm -hmm. and you know that also involves like really doing your own work and showing up for yourself so you can show up for others mm -hmm. i found that anything that you're working through and the fears you have really come out when you're in front of an audience or your community mm -hmm. right and and how a lot of times women you know we say well okay you know what I'm gonna put that power suit on and I'm gonna show up as that superwoman or I'm gonna show up in 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 my masculine and I want to push 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 and I want to do 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 the one thing that I've learned through the years of doing that because I was there I did that and it worked for a while until I was burnt out. Yeah. And then I think, why is this not working for me? How am I not recognizing um, my block here? So what I do want us to say is for those of us women that are in that online space, or you're thinking about going into the online space, really understand that the work that you do online and online, offline offline is just as important yeah. your relationships um who you choose as your partner can make you or break you that has okay. been a huge lesson for me mm -hmm. huge huge lesson mm -hmm. and I'm finally in a place where i can say yes you know i have an amazing partner who supports me for me to show up in my own space and how i want to show up um, so that can make you or break you, you know, how you look at 
business. Your business isn't something you sit down and 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 you plan and then it has to be perfect. Like you you evolve. Please evolve. Allow your business to evolve. Um, ask for help. Yeah, big one. I know you asked, like, you know, what can you ask me? But it was like that's I just had felt like I have to share this. Is yeah. you have to ask for help. You have to have the right community. Mm -hmm. And another big thing is understand who is around you. So important. Yeah. Understand who is around you. Who do you have around you? The feedback you get, the support you get. That is also important. You can't do it yourself. Okay. Yeah. There's so many women that we see and they're like, you know, I, I did this and I was trying to do this myself and this is what happened. And I'm burnt out. I just don't feel good. I, my relationship is suffering, all of these things. And that's when, you know, asking for help, building a community is important. Yeah. And it's just not one. It's yeah. Not one thing. And allow yourself that's sometimes to slow down, right? Just slow down at some point. Yeah. But sometimes I sense yeah. that women want to be on the spot right now yesterday even and um and it's like, it doesn't work that way you know building muscles takes time energetic emotional yes. muscles also it takes time you may really you, you know your imagination is already there sure but your body needs to calibrate to that and it's it, it takes some time you need to be patient patience yes. not waiting waiting is very often you know like Sometimes people really mistake waiting as patience. Patience is a component of active doing, of creating. Yes. You need patience when you do something. Waiting is when you sit and you just, I'm going to manifest through my affirmations. No, it's not going to work this way, lady. So no, no. <laughs> you're just going no. to be it's, it's, it's a part. It's a part of it. It's like a little part of it but yeah. absolutely right like I love that you mentioned that because patience isn't the act of sitting still patience is the act of doing the work and trusting the process trust trusting the time exactly. but you have to be doing the work mm -hmm. and at the same time you have to and I say have to that you need to put yourself as a priority and take care of your health exactly yeah. I, yeah, I have this. I have this. Yeah, I have this. I have this thing. I do workshops, and I and I work with whether I'm doing a workshop for a company or um or or a group. Is that if your business doesn't have a health plan, you you don't have a business for too mm -hmm. long. You won't have for too long. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, that resonates so much. It's uh, all the things that we say, they may seem kind of excluding, but it all just, it, it all has its place. Uh, it's not chaotic. Mm -hmm. It's actually, when you look at that from a zoom out perspective, it all intertwines and you need to ask yourself good questions. What do I need right now? Am mm -hmm. I in a comfortable position? Um, do I feel safe? Is it okay so that I can build something? And I can choose my pain, let's call it, for growth. Or am I actually in such a rush? Or am I so overwhelmed? Uh, do I need actually more safety? It's not like either or. It's what now? What now do I need? How do I feel and what do I need? It's, it's so important. No matter what you do and no matter the field of your life. It's so important. So, yeah, uh, Ashika, any... Do you have any last words? I mean, I'm, I could talk with you for hours, but, uh, you know, um, do you have any last words that you would like to say to, to my listeners? Hmm. I think what I want to leave with everybody is that, um, mm, that's a tough one. There's, there's, there's a, there's a few, but the last word is that, you know, as women, we really need to recognize how powerful we are mm -hmm. and it comes from within. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything we need is already within us. If we recognize that, 
then we're able to pick and choose what we want in our life to get us to where we want to be, mm -hmm. whether it's in your business, in a relationship, in motherhood, whatever it is that you're creating as a leader, because we're all leaders somewhere in our life, mm -hmm. right? Every woman has the ability to be a leader, exactly. but you need to first know everything that you need is within you. Once you recognize that, once you change your belief system, right? Once you work on creating a, leaving, not leaving, but I guess understanding that your story had a purpose to get you to where you are mm -hmm. and then understanding that you have the ability to create a new story for yourself. Yeah. You don't have to carry that old story. When we tell our stories here, we use it as a stepping stone. But what are we doing? We're creating a new timeline. We're creating a new story going forward. Yeah. Right. But where does it come from? It comes from within. And when we know that, when we feel that, when we learn that, that's when you can really step into your power and create the life that you want mm -hmm. without waiting for permission. Mm -hmm. Amen. I love that. <laughs> I love that. And you should just own it. Just own it. Everything, everything about it. Just own it. And really, you're unstoppable and uh, you're lovable and you... You can do whatever you want and whatever is there for you. You can just take it. The universe doesn't play favorites. It gives to all of us. No. Yeah. Will no. you respond? It's, there's a bunch of yeah. 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 Wonderful. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much for this talk. It was wonderful. Um, I just cannot wait for um, for everything that will happen under this talk on my YouTube channel. And uh, guys, if you have any other um comments that you would like to leave just leave it and ask any questions if you want to ask say what you want to say and um if you you know you can find shika on the description below the video you can find her there on your on her instagram and tell me ashika if there's any other uh place that people can find you um well i've got my podcast also the Secrets of a Vibrant Woman, which is um, is, is such an honor to have such amazing women on mm -hmm. and um, having conversations. But you can find me also on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Um, got my website at helloashikalasani.com. Um, hello, um, you can email me. So my first and last name is pretty easy to find me. <laughs> Someone's looking for me. They'll be able to find me. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll put all of these, uh, all of these in the in the description. You guys, you just you just visit uh, visit Ashika just just like that. If you want to buy the book, it's a great one. And um, again, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Sabina. This was such an honor to be here and our conversation. And you were so wonderful at what you do. And it's been. It has truly been an honor to to see where we both started and where we are now. So I, I congratulate you and the work that you do. Thank you. Thank that you. means a lot. Again, thank you so much. So guys, have a great day. Have a great week and see you next time. Bye.